With Cinema 4D S22 and its new built-in GLTF exporter, it's gotten a lot easier to export your C4D files for use in game engines and AR applications like Unity, Adobe Aero, or other proprietary AR apps. There are some important things to consider when building models and animations for GLTF export. You have to be mindful of file size and geometry optimization of your model or your scene. Most GLTF applications support up to 130,000 polygons. Now the more dense the mesh, the bigger the file size and the slower your object will render in AR. To optimize your models, be sure to turn down your subdivision surface subdivisions and remove excess segments on primitives. Now that we talked about polygon count, let's move on to materials. Most AR apps support physically based rendering materials or PBR materials and standard materials from Cinema 4D. These materials include the base color channel that you can set either the base color or base bitmap texture. The other channel supported is Cinema 4D's reflectance channel, including roughness. Now for some applications, reflection and specular strength is only controlled by roughness. So if you want subtle reflection, crank up that roughness value. As of right now, multi-layered materials are not supported. So that means you'll need to stick with a single reflectance layer. If you're using normal maps, you just need to set them under the reflectance layer under bump strength and set the mode to custom normal map. GLTF also supports ambient occlusion, emissive materials, and alpha. Now onto textures. GLTF format supports only image-based textures, and some apps recommend you have textures scaled down to 2K. That means if you're using any shader-based materials like noise, tiles, or anything else, you must bake it into an image texture to work. Let's move on to animation. Position, or translation, scale, and rotation are fully supported. As are any animation based on joints and skin deformers that utilize weights. Now there's an important detail about using weights in joints. Weight influence is limited to six joints per vertex. If there's more than six joints influencing a single vertex, animation will not export correctly. So areas where there may be a lot of joints used to animate a character, say its face or hands, could cause issues. Next, any PLA-based animation like fluid, cloth, or soft body dynamics are not supported. If you have any MoGraph cloner or rigid body animation, this all needs to be baked out to PSR keyframes. The one trick to exporting point level animation is using pose morphs and morph targets that store points from pose morphs. Here I'm using a character that's animated just using joints and weights with PSR keyframes. Again, remember to check your weight tags to ensure vertices aren't being influenced by more than six joints. You can do this by double clicking a weight tag to bring up your weight tool and hover over each point to see the number of joint influences. Looks like the weights are all good and ready to go, so we're ready to export. To export, go to File, Export, GLTF. Now let's go ahead and cover all of these settings. This first setting is where you can choose which file format to use. Depending on which app you're importing into, you may need to export either a GLTF or the binary version of GLTF, which is GLB. Adobe Aero, for example, only supports the GLB format. Current frame exports the current frame, or you can use the custom frame to choose a custom frame to export. Now let's go to animation. PSR exports the translation or position, scale, and rotation tracks of objects. Now this next setting is important if you're using pose morphs in any way, including to morph point level animation. So be sure you have the correct setting chosen here. Skin is going to be important in our instance as all of our animations coming from the skin deformers and joint animation. If we had this turned off, we wouldn't have any movement on our character. And then there's bake animations, which bakes the scenes animation to the position, scale, and rotation tracks of the exported objects. Next, let's check out materials. Textures allows you to save the image textures used in your materials. Double-sided allows you to see the polygon faces of an object to be visible on both sides. So if you see your object in an AR app, look like you can see through part of it, checking this on will solve that issue. Optional settings include cameras, normals, UVs, which you can turn off if you're not using image textures, and flip Z, which converts the scene from a left-handed system to a right-handed system. Now, as far as previewing your GLTF files after you save out, 
You can easily preview GLTF files on the web using certain websites like sandbox.babylonjs.com. You can also create really cool AR experiences via mobile apps like Adobe Aero. GLTF also allows you to bring in your 3D scenes and animations into game engines like Unreal and Unity. Needless to say, GLTF usage is only going to get more and more popular, and with Cinema 4D S22, GLTF export is only clicks away. Thanks for watching.